Hey everybody, how you doing today? Happy Tuesday. Hope you're doing well. Cheers, got your coffee. Right, we got a couple things on tap today. Oh, you can't see that screen. How about over here? Nope. Not that one either. That way. There, now can you see it? Awesome. Oh, and it shrunk. Here we go. We have reached week 11. My goodness. Hey, Dusty, how you doing today? Uh, my apologies for the midterm. Last week, the uh, trying to do everything off my phone hotspot was horrible. Um, it was bad planning, I, I suppose. I had, uh, there, there was Wi-Fi at the camp, but just, it, it was like unusable. And my phone hotspot was better. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, your quizzes aren't in yet, so if you want to get those in, if you want me to get those in before you turn in the midterm, I'm cool with that. Um, I can push it out a couple more days, because, sure, um, it, it's been a, a rough summer, so uh, I, the, you guys should get the benefit of me not doing things as fast as I should over the summer, because things aren't going well. All right, so I, I'm happy to do that if you want. Um, we're going to talk about Java FX tonight. Apparently, there was some, uh, I don't know if confusion is the right word, some mix-up, some, some differences in what level of GUI programming you guys had experienced in 1500, depending on who you had. Savvy, you feel that? Yeah. Um, I, I'm so ready for this pandemic to be done, to be over with all of it, and um, just to get back to something normal, if we can get more people vaccinated, that would help. If we can get the young kids vaccinated, and yet I still need to get three more of my kids vaccinated. Um, three of my kids got it. My wife and I got it. Uh, so we're, is that five-eighths of the way there? Yeah, I, I can do math. Um, but it's, it's just been not the summer we had planned. Um, but, you know, we'll get there. All right. Yeah, so we'll talk about that. Um, project 4, uh, and that one is due today, right? Today? June 20th? July 20th. I, I can't read, folks. I, I'm really out of it today. So um, back before the pandemic started, I had an idea. Uh, I wanted to get another tattoo done. And then the pandemic started, and like, oh, that's fine, I can wait. And then, uh, you know, it didn't stop. Uh, but my birthday was in April, so back in like end of March, early April, I'm like, hey, I want to go get a tattoo for my birthday. Um, turns out, lots of people wanted have been wanting to get tattoos and weren't able to, and people were booked up, and I ended up scheduling it um, for today. So I had that done earlier earlier this afternoon, finally, which was super cool. Um, but I also have this bad reflex where, like, blood and needles and shots and things tend to make me pass out. Uh, it's the vasovagal reflex. Yeah, yeah, I got the, I got a pack of Aquaphor for sure, Professor Perp. Um, so I, I've been better lately. I, I take shots, like, seven times a day because I'm diabetic. Uh, so the shots I'm okay with. Um, but when I got my first tattoo, I did pass out. But only when they got to my inner wrist, like, right on the tendons here. So... This, the top part here was fine, um, but like right on there in the tendons, I passed out. And I was like, oh no, I'll be okay. I, I did a couple blood works lately and I haven't passed out. And I was like, oh, I'll, I should be fine. Um, and I ended up passing out twice and throwing up uh, this afternoon. So I'm not feeling so hot today. <laughs> um, but, you know, I got it done and then I, I get to keep it now. So it's rebooting. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and to reboot my system. I got to remember that, Dusty. That... That's good. That's really good. Uh, so here's here's my picture of it uh, before I got it all bandaged up. So I officially I, I'm carrying my nerd card on my my arm now. But it's gonna make typing a little hard because this whole uh, inner arm now is bandaged, right? Like, so we'll see how well I can. I, th I think I can still type pretty decently. So we'll give that a shot. Um. All right, uh, someone was, 
Yeah, it, it was sent, like right on the tendon it was sensitive. Uh, closer up to the elbow wasn't actually wasn't too bad. I didn't have a lot of trouble with that. Um, but just that the reflex she got. Oh, I think I closed that again, didn't I? Um, like she did the outline first, so she got the first three dice done and started on the, the next one. I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling great. I might pass out, and I passed out. And then I, I came to you, I was like, okay, you know, let me go um, wash off my face and get some water, and, and I was feeling okay. And then, oh, the actual elbow? Okay. Ooh, yeah, I've never never tried it on the actual elbow. And she got the next three done, started on the, the handle here, and then I passed out again. <laughs> and then um, she was like, why don't you lay on the table, which we should have done originally instead of sitting in a chair. Um, and then she was able to finish up the outline and do all the the inner lines and the shading and stuff, so we'll see. But uh, hopefully it heals up nicely. As a diabetic, I heal a little slower than usual, which is unfortunate. It's a blood sugar thing. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I've seen some people just had just the dice, some people had dice swords, but uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Kingdom Hearts, so I wanted the Keyblade Hilt. Mountain Dew is the anti-passing out serum. I, I've not tried that savvy but maybe it's worth a shot. So that was happening. That was fun, right? Um, yeah, we got Project 4. Someone was asking me about Project 4. Uh, we were chatting back and forth. I'm sorry, I only know handles here. Um, and then I ended up not being able to meet because I didn't eat until I got back, and then now class time. So let me know. Um, I'm still happy to check things out with you. Um, how did Project 4 go for everybody? Trying to add in the actual, like, playing portion and then a little bit of writing to disc for our um um was it uh mind mind no animal animal craft game so the actual game loop so we can explore the island interact with our spaces add friends travel to friends island save and load your game so we're going to implement serializable for our classes write the binary objects to file and for loading you just read it How'd that one go? I had only a couple questions, and uh, I think uh, Tim said not very many people ended up showing up for study groups, so I think that's a good sign, or maybe that's a really bad sign. And it, it's really hard to tell with, with this remote learning, whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, I'm going to go, I'll copy my Project 3... Uh, so I can leave it as is, and then I'll, I'll do a new, just copy it into a Project 4. And we can just kind of go from there. So let me close these ones down. Oh, and um, registration is up and running for the fall semester, by the way. So if you are not done yet and you have other classes you're going to take here at OCC, please take a look and get registered. So, I know you're taking this one, and you're not just taking classes for transfer, then you might have some other classes uh, come up to take. If you're just doing summer transfer credit, great. Um, thanks for hanging out with us. It's It's been a weird summer. Uh, my apologies, this was your summer experience at OCC. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, we're... we're we're surviving, I suppose. So next semester, lots of good classes out there, depending on what, what else you folks need to take. Um, if you haven't yet, I know some of you are doing both, and uh, I'm sorry. Uh, next class you'll probably want to take in the track then is going to be Data Structures with Dr. Baugh. Monday or Tuesday night, it looks like. You can take with Dr. Baugh. It's a fantastic class. looks more at how we store data in memory the actual storage of data, how we do it efficiently, how we look at algorithms. This is a really fun class. Uh, I'm doing this one over the summer. If you wanted to check out my YouTube stuff, uh, Dr. Ball does it a little differently, and that's okay. He's, he's a great guy. Uh, 2454, if you haven't taken that one yet, uh, the web development, web system development in PHP and Java. I'll be doing that one Thursday nights. Uh, the plan is to do it similar to what I'm doing now, but I'll be sitting in the classroom with anyone who wants to show up in person. And then... We'll go from there. So if you want to attend remotely synchronous, you can just hop on Twitch and watch, and I'll just broadcast on Twitch from the classroom instead of from my home office here. Or if you want to do it asynchronous, 
um, it doesn't say that yet, so you'll show up the first night, and I'll say, oh, by the way, I'm going to do this flex thing, so you can just watch the recordings and do it at your own pace if that's your preferred learning style and that works well for you. Have at it. Um, I'm a terrible online learner, and I really need to go sit my butt in a seat and be in a live class where I can ask questions back and forth, and, and I just, that that's has always been my preferred way of learning things and, and interacting with people, so... Um, I like that, and I know some people don't, so that's okay. So hopefully this sort of flexible model will work well for you folks. But that's the only one I'm going to be teaching that you'll be interested in. Uh, the other courses I'm doing are the 1500 courses, which hopefully should be boring for you by now. Anything else you need? Uh, we also now have um, Mr. Nasser here, Mr. Hadi, um, is joining us as a new full-time faculty member. Uh, he's been an adjunct for a couple years now. Uh, really smart guy, uh, works in the auto industry, uh, doing uh, DevOps sort of style work. Um, really, really big into continuous integration, continuous, continuous deployment tools, which I'm a huge fan of as well. Uh, so he'll be our fourth full-time faculty member for the Orchard Ridge campus. Super excited to have four of us back now, so we're back up to uh, full strength. Um, so he's got a couple classes. He's doing the C++ class with him, or you can take a Wednesday nights. Um, one of our amazing adjuncts, or the special projects in software. I think that's, is that one just for the students in the certificate program? I forget. I'm sorry. It's, there's a lot of different things to look at and see who does what. Um, but he's got those ones. I think he's got one other one. Oh, one of the web development classes, right? Which I think you usually take earlier, but maybe not. One of these, yeah, the 1420 HTML5 programming. Or you can do JavaScript uh, with Dr. Baugh. So lots of fun stuff. Anyway, sorry. That was probably boring. But NetBeans has now loaded, thankfully. We did that while NetBeans loaded. So close projects. I'm going to go find our project. I'm going to find 2151 the summer. I'm going to find project 3. And let's see if I can just copy it here. Copy. There we go. And we'll call this project four. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, Miad, yes. I've got a couple for you here. I've just found some good ones. Let's see. Just today I was screenshotting a bunch of good ones. Because uh, my, my jokes are, you know, running low. So there was a, a, a friend of mine, he's, he's an older older gentleman, um, really kind of bought into that hippie lifestyle. And, you know, it's a, you know just peace, love, and I forget whatever the, the phrase is here. But he said he would never go swimming because um, he, he was afraid that the lifeguards wouldn't be able to get to him because he's too far out. That one, that one was only okay. All right, all right, all right. One, one other one, just in case. This one might be a little bit better. So we, we recently, uh, my, my sister-in-law has a, a German Shepherd dog. It's a gorgeous dog, real, real beautiful dog. It doesn't have all the coloring. It's like a little bit of a darker mix, so it's got a little, little like heavier black in there, but it's a gorgeous dog. But every time she takes it to the park, ducks just flock around it and keep harassing it, and like it gets so mad at all these ducks, and she was asking, like, what, what can she do to keep these ducks away from her dog? And I said, well, you know, really there's nothing you can do. That's one of the downsides of having a purebred dog. All right, hopefully those will those will do. <laughs> All right, so we're going to need a little bit of work here um, for tweaking this. So, And I'm going to rename this one to Project 4. So use the tools. Do the refactor rename because it'll do everything for you. If you do it by hand, it's going to get all upset and complain that, hey, I changed the package name and now all of my imports are wrong here. I'm actually going to close out a three. I'm going to leave just four open here. And now all of them now should have the package changed here. Should be awesome. And then I want to rename this one. We're going to refactor, rename this one to project four as well. 
and this will be project4.java now, where the name of your file matches the name of your public class. Okay, so we got players, right? And then what we needed to do then was have our play loop. So how do we interact with our island, interact with the spaces, add friends, travel to friends, islands, save and load our game. For saving and loading, we can implement serializable. So let's try, you know, do that one first maybe. So let's take a look at our classes here and see if they implement serializable. So what's cool, this buildable space, right, extends space. So if we go to space here, we should be able to say space implements serializable. Serializable. And I'll say, oh, I don't know what serializable is. So we'll say, oops. Yes, please add the import here. And now space should be good. Now, because diggable space, choppable space, and buildable space all extend space, they all already implement serializable. So we don't need to say, again, if you wanted to, right, you could add it in here. Oops, cancel. Um, you could just kind of separate your interfaces here, but it's telling us, oh, I don't know, anyone wants the import. That's not even going to tell us. That's okay. But we already did this because our parent class does it. If our parent class is serializable, so are we, right? Because we are one of those types. So then player should implement serializable. Look at that. It auto added the import for me. Um, cool should be serializable. Okay. Yep. Add that. And then my interfaces here are just interfaces. There's nothing actually to save there. So the interfaces shouldn't need to implement serializable. Right, the space will implement that interface here for those. And then island should be serializable as well. Oops. How about right there? And it should add the import. Okay, so now everything should be serializable here. And remember the, the kind of the chain that happens here is that player has their island, their home island. Um, now, if we're going to be traveling around islands, if we only have a single island, it's going to be hard for us to find where we actually are. Right? It's it's going to be a little tricky here. Um, well, that, that's our home island, I guess. So I guess we could put the island, right, add the player here to the island. We can do that. We should be able to use um, add player. Right? We can add a player to an island, and then the player can interact with that island. But then the player will have their own home island. So they'll probably be... We need a way to get their home island. Right? I don't think we have, currently have a way to get the home island from our, our current version here, right? What do we do? We have get home. Look at that. We have the method for get home. Awesome. So then we need, we'll make a new player, right? And then we'll get their island. So this is the island, is the current island. Is going to be the player dot get home. That'll be their home island. Then we can do things and interact with their island. Right? We have current island. You can do dot, and you can add players. You can, can figure out whether or not you can build. You can figure out, uh, you can get the space. You can pick up tools, can remove players. Maybe we have ways that we can interact with our island here and kind of move around it. So we'll get the space at a given row and column, and then we'll have to go find out where it is, right? So our, our player then, Right, so we're going to have our um, int current x, I guess. Current x is player dot get location x and a int for current y. Player dot get location y. And then we'll get the current space. So we'll have a space for current space. Uh, so that'll be my current island dot get space given the current x and the current y. It's current. So capital Y there, right? Current Y, and then we can print out the current space. Uh, no, current space dot get description. We can see what's there, right? And printing the island, we can print the island, I guess, or tell them what space they're on, and here's the island. Sure, we have a couple things we could do here. This is not my day, friends. I think there's a little fruit fly in my coffee. That's no fun. I guess that's extra protein, right? Sure. All right, so th this is an empty space with a place to build. So it must be a buildable space. All right, so if it's buildable, we'd be able to build it 
if we had the right tool. Right, so if we go to player, we say can build, we're going to check whether or not we can build. Yeah, extra protein. I guess, right? I mean, apparently, if people could get over their idea that eating bugs is weird, we'd have a much better supply of protein without having to do things like take up acres and acres and acres of land for cows or something. I don't know. I, I got my son chocolate-covered crickets, and he was brave enough to eat them. Um, I think I tried one. I don't remember, though, but he, he's like, yeah, you know, taste the chocolate. You don't really taste the cricket. And I'm not sure serving us chocolate-covered crickets is the answer to that um, problem. All right. So we'll have to see whether or not we can build at the space, right? If the space is buildable, and if we have a tool for it, we can do something there. If not, we can just move, right? We want to move around and see where we can go. So then our island, right? Uh, let's see. We can pick up a tool if there's a tool. Right, we can try and pick up the tool. We can dig spaces, we can chop spaces, we can build spaces. We can add and remove players, we can two-string the island. So the, there's no way of knowing like how wide the island is right now. Remember, we're like kind of a, a random... What is this? Uh, we have 10 rows and 11 columns. Is that what they did here? That's a weird... Okay, so we're a rectangle, I guess. Sure, it could have been random. But maybe we want a way to show them, you know, what is the max X and what's the max Y. And so how, how do we have the player move around? Because the player, we can set the location and move, right? You want to go up, down, left, or right. You could move, change your X and your Y. But you got to make sure it's a valid location on the island. So we'll need a way to find out what is the max valid location. Right? Or, or we could even add, like, hey, here's a public boolean is valid location, maybe, as on the island for an int row index and int column index. So we could ask the island. We're just going to say, hey, if the um, if zero is less than or equal to the row index and the row index is less than my grid dot size, right, that's the number of rows. So if you're between zero and less than the size, you're at a valid row index, right? And then the same for columns. And that zero oops, is less than or equal to the column index. And that the column index is less than the grid dot at the row index. No, at, no, oh, uh, get, sorry, get the row index dot size. So tell me how many columns are in that particular row. Right, this one's important because it's not a square. So I don't want to do the column index is less than the grid size because that's the number of rows. I want to do the column index is less than the number of indexes in that row that we're in, the size here. So we can ask the, the island, hey, is this a valid location? Great, and we can go there. We could do that. So then to move the player around, we can have the player move up, down, left, or right, that sort of thing. So we ask them here. Uh, we, maybe we don't print out the whole island. Maybe we, we do that another time here. Or we just close it out for now. Um, so we'll say, do you want to go, go up, down, left, or right, or something like that? We can give them some sort of menu or ask them what they want to do. Or do you want to dig? Do you want to chop? Do you want to build? Do you want to pick up a tool? Right, we got lots of, of choices here. Right? And, and there's not always going to be something to do. So this happened to be an empty space with a place to build. Sure. So we'll go up, down, left, or right. So and then if... Or we probably need to ask for that input, right? So then we'll use a keyboard. I'm sorry, a scanner object. We'll call it keyboard like Mr. Gaddis likes to do. Given system.in. We'll say, okay, sure. So now I can get some input. Oh, we got to import it here. Thank you. We'll have a string for, I don't know, their choice is keyboard.nextline. What have they typed in? Oops, not R. There we go. So ask for the choice. And then we can see, hey, if that choice is valid, go for it. Or maybe while it's not valid, we want to keep on asking them. Um, so 
you know, this would be a really nice little validation loop, right? We could add a little helper loop here. So private string, uh, static string, I don't know what options menu, menu. And then we're going to say, here's a, how about we do string for choice equals an empty string. And then while choice dot equals ignore case, ignore case up. And so as long as it's not up equals ignore case, there we go up. So as long as it's not up and it's not down. And it's not right, and it's not left. Up, down, left, right. And what else do we say? What other valid options? We had build, we had chop, we had dig, we had pickup tool. Sure. Right. Dig, build, chop, pick up. I don't know. Sure. If it's not any of those, let's keep on asking them. Uh, and we don't need to re-declare choice. Oh, and now we need our little scanner here. So we're probably going to use this more than once. Um, sure, we could just declare it as a static value. Uh, and probably make that private. So now we have a keyboard that can be shared among all of our static methods. Remember, these static methods, we don't need an instance of Project 4. We just have a Project 4 class. And we can call these things static. They exist once. So then we have the options menu, so then we'll have a string for choice equals the options menu. Great. So empty is not up, it's not down, it's not left, it's not right, it's not dig, it's not build, it's not chop, it's not pick up. So we know the loop will run at least once, right? And then we'll ask them up, down, left, or right. Um, build, dig, chop, or pick up a tool. Sure. Okay, and then when we're done, we can return the choice. This way I can ask them, you know, we're just breaking this apart. Here's a little helper method here. Awesome, so ask what they want to do. Then we can do a whole thing. So if the choice dot equals ignore case, if it equals up, we're going to see, hey, can we actually go up? So we're going to say if uh, that's going to be our current island is valid location, if we're going to go up, that's our current x minus 1, right, current y. If that's valid, then we go up. Then we'll say my player dot set x location x, no, oh, set location x, current x minus 1. Great, we went up. Okay. And then we have down, we have right, we have left. So we have up, we have down is plus one, and plus one. Uh, to go right is the, oops, no, 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 X's, X's are left and rights. I have this wrong. Y's are up and downs. Folks, you got to check me out here. You got to check me. So to go up is Y minus one. There we go. To go down is Y plus one. There we go. Right is X plus one. And left is x minus 1. There we go. That's better, right? Because your x and your y, right? How far x and how far y. So this is really column and this is row. Oh, that's a little confusing. But that's okay. And it should be okay. Okay. And then we'll check our other options. So if we said, and I guess these could be else ifs, right? It'll be slightly more efficient if we say else if, because we don't need to evaluate the other ones. Else if, so if we said chop, so now we need to say uh, is choppable, or is, or no, yeah, can, uh oh, do we, we not have a can chop from my island? Do we not add all of them? Can build, can chop, yeah. Huh. Oh, we didn't we didn't change. 
these other ones for x and y. So we should change these to be these player versions here, right? Where we took out the, we got the x and y from the player. So grid.get. Oh yeah, okay, so we changed it, we just didn't take out the variables. I like it. So current island dot 10 chop space. There we go. Given the player. So if they can chop, then we'll chop the space. Right, so we said, where's our space here then? A given space. So if our space is choppable, it'll have a chop method. If the player can chop. I guess we need to ask if the player can chop too. So if player dot can chop and the current island can chop space, right? Well, look at that. We're already checking that. If we could, if the player can chop, nice. So we don't even need to add that. So if the player can chop the space, then we're going to chop the space. So we need to get that space, right, out of the the grid and call chop on it. We'll take our current island and we're going to get space given the current x, current y. I guess we could just do player x and y every time, but it seems a little easier. I don't know. Current x, current y. Now, there's no chop method, though, because this is a space. We need to cast it as choppable. So this needs to be casted as a choppable space. Right, so we'll get the space, turn it into a choppable space. Then we can chop it. My goodness, a lot of, a lot of effort there, but that's okay. So get the space, treat it, cast it as a choppable space, call chop on it. All right. Else if, if it wasn't chop, was it build? So can build space. Cast it as a buildable space. And call build. Else if, it was diggable. All right. Can dig space. Then cast that as a diggable space and call dig. Okay, those were our choices there. Oh, and then pick up tool, right? Uh, else if our option was pick up current island. So that is a can. Nope, we just need the space there then, right? So. We'll take our current island space, get space, and we should be able to call get tool. It gives us a tool back. So tool tool equals the current island get tool. And this may or may not give us back a tool. Remember, space, if there is no tool there, right? Um, I guess we could, yeah, we could ask has tool. There we go. This one add tools? We set tool to null. We added tools, right? When we built out our, our fun island. Yeah, okay, yeah, we set the tool to a new tool. Where's our where's our space? So we need to pick up the tool and then we need to get rid of the if we have a tool. So if the current island space Dot has tool, then we can pick one up. Tool, tool. And then we'll take that tool and add it to our player. So player dot add tool. Uh oh. We have a get tool, so we don't have an add tool for player. Get tools. Hey, we have no way to add. Uh-oh. We need a way to add a tool. Public void. 
uh, add tool, give it a tool tool, tools.add the tool. There we go. Now we can add a tool. Add tool, give it the tool, and then we need to take the tool off that space there then, right? Dot set tool. No. Set tool to null, because we took the space out, and then we can change the, des the description of it. All right, so all of this is really annoying. This current island, current space, but dot set description. And now it, it is an empty space. Okay, so we grab the tool and now it's empty. Okay, now we've got the tool. We picked up a tool. And really we just keep on doing this then, right? You know, while... I don't know. Um... Yeah, I guess, I guess we have a string for choice equals nothing, and while choice.equals, ignore case, while well, doesn't equal quit. Let's keep on going. Let me do all these things here. So I guess quit should be a valid choice in here then, right? We should add a, a quit. We should also add a save and a load too, right? We should add a save and a load. Tool, save, load, or quit. I'm going to keep adding options here. All right, I think we're good with that for now. Then so we should be able to move around the island, do some things. Oops, What's this choice. We didn't do save and load yet, so let's do save. I said I didn't need all of that. Save and load and then quit just ends this loop here and then we need to say like thanks for playing or something. We're playing our Animal Craft game. So to save we need to serialize all of the information that we have. Now player is there and current island is the player's home but we haven't figured out how to put the player on a different island yet. So if we just save player, the only thing we're going to get here is their home island and their tools and their friends and that sort of thing. So we also need to save the current island that they're on. Right, so we can write two objects out, we can read two objects in. Because they might end up at a different island later. Right, so we can set up a new we need a new um, object output stream. I'm just going to go take a look at our GitHub here because 51. I just want to copy paste it. Exceptions in file IO. So that's an object output stream. Here we go. So make a file output stream, make an object output stream, write the object, close the stream. Look at that. Nope, I didn't copy. Is NetBeans going to be dumb? NetBeans is going to be dumb. Yep, sometimes I copy paste breaks in NetBeans because reasons. So file output stream, file output stream, file output stream equals a new file output stream. Given, I don't know, here's save game dot dat. Sure. Yeah, the, the, we, you don't have to let them pick. If you want to let them pick, great. That's above and beyond the things we needed to do. Um, and I'm going to go cheat here because I'm going to do all these I.O. things. I just want to do star. Import everything for now. It'll make life easier for me later. And then, oh, there, we need to have a try-catch block. So we'll add a try-catch block. Don't need this logger nonsense. Uh, we'll just print out the exception. We have a file output stream. And then we're going to make an object output stream. Object output stream, object output stream, the new object output stream, given the file output stream. Okay, and again, yes, so we're going to check, change this to IO exception. It'll catch all of my IO exceptions. 
And then my object output stream, we can write an object, write object. We can write the player, and then we can write the current island. Did we ever add the player to the current island? I don't know if we did. I don't think we did by default, did we? This island doesn't get generated with a... Oh, it does have a player as the owner. Does it add it to the players? We should add the owner by default. What do you think? Should we add the owner? Maybe we should, or may maybe we do it in here. That's fine. Say current island, uh, add player, given the player. We'll add the player for them. We'll add them to their home. Maybe, maybe they just start off in some limbo land. So we're going to save the player, and we're going to save their current island. Now, their current island happens to be their home, but this way, if they move around, we're going to also have their island around. Okay, so we're going to write it, and then we will close it. Object output stream, that close. Close it. All right, and then we don't need those logger things. Give it a little format. And then for loading, then, right, to load game, we're going to do this similar thing, but it's a file input stream, object input stream, and read object. We need a try catch, and we have a file input stream. File input stream, we can do file input stream, we want an object input stream. Object input stream, object input stream, new object input stream, given the file input stream. And then we're going to read object, read object. And then we need to cast that, right, as a type of player. And say my player equals, read it and cast it, save it. So we read object, oops, what do we need here? We doing it wrong? Where's my read? Read object. No, that should be fine. Yeah, just read object. How am I getting? Oh, the class not found exception. That's right. Or class not found. And then my current island equals cast this as an island. Option input stream. Read that. So we're going to read the player. Then we're going to read a island. That should be the save and load. So we haven't figured out how to add friends yet. We'll have to do that in a little bit. And travel to friends islands. We're not quite there yet, but we're, we're getting there. Right, so should we try it? Let's see if it'll run. All right, we are spaced with an axe, so we should be able to pick up the tool. Now we're at an empty space. Okay, so now let's save. And then there should be now a File here, save game.dat, there, empty space. Okay? So if we go, uh, oh, we need the else, right? If we can't go up, I forgot. So else, so you can't go up from here. All right. I'm going to have a couple of those messages. Can't go down from here. Can't go right from here. Can't go left from here. You can't chop here. You can't build here. You can't dig here. Um, there, what, there is nothing to pick up here. And if that works, maybe we'll say save game, save game. And then we'll say loaded game. All right, so we'll retry that a little bit. So let's try running. So right now we're in an empty space. Oh, sure, it's empty. I wanted something like that was interesting. Up, we can't go up. Can we go down? There's an empty space for the place to dig. So if we load, it should put us back to that empty space that we were at. Maybe we even tell them the X, Y. I don't know. Do we tell them X and Y? We can tell them x uh percent d for digit right and then y percent d for digit and then a percent s string set that, that look right for our string format 
Come on, spring that format. Here's our string. And then we need an current X and current Y. Uh oh. Missing a closing parenthesis. Let's give that a run. All right, so we're at zero, zero. We're at an empty space. So let's go down. We're at one, zero. It's an empty space. Let's load. We're back at zero, zero, the empty space. So we like list tools. I don't know if you have an option for list tools or something. So, so see all the tools that we have. You can do that, right? You list tools. So let's add an option for list. Save, load. Pick up a tool, I don't know, list, save, load. Okay, so sure. So if the option is list here, we're going to list out all the tools. So this is current tools. And then we'll say for tool tool in player.get tools. Print out the tool. Now, does tool have a two string? No. So we just have a a name, right? So maybe tool.get name, or we could add the, the two string. Ride public string two string. Return name. It makes it nice and easy, right? So we can list out all the tools that we have. Right now, if we list, we have no tools. But if we load and then we list, uh oh. Do we not have a tool? I thought we picked up an axe. Uh-oh. Oh, goodness. Invalid class exception. Project 4 tool load incompatible. Oh, dear. We had an exception. Couldn't load the tool. Is the tool not serializable? It says the tool is serializable. Player serializable? Hmm. We did something wrong in our... Why can we not load a tool? Yeah, okay, that's no good. That's fine. So we'll go down. Let's see if we can find a tool. Down, down, down. Why isn't down moving us? Down isn't moving us. Current Y, you go plus one. Not the X. Is valid location. Uh, am I doing this backwards here? Oh, set location Y. There we go. Set location Y. Alright. Ugh. That was no good, friends. Try that one more time. Alright, so let's go down. Empty space. We'll go down. Okay. Uh, nope. Down. I want a tool. Down. 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 Okay, so let's pick up. Should we tell them we pick up a tool? Right? Pick up. You pick up a or an or the, maybe the tool. Okay, so now if we list, we should get axe. Okay, so now we have, a, we have an axe. That's good. So now let's see if we can save. It saved the game. Great. And we'll just stop and see if we can load it now. We'll rerun it. If we list, we're empty. If we load... We loaded the game. Okay, it works now. So something in our save state must have been weird. I'm not really sure what was wrong with that right now. Let's see. It's tools. Yeah, it's an empty array list. It added the tool. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe we didn't have add tool? I'm not really sure. So load. Okay, let's see if we can list. All right, so we still have our axe. Good. So if we go up, it's a place to dig. We have an axe. We can't dig. We go up. We go up. We can build. Nope. We want a place to chop. We go right, place to build, we go right, 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 space with an axe, we already have an axe, we'll go right, right, place with a shovel, sure, we'll pick up the shovel, we list, now we have an axe and a shovel, let's go left, 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 dig, okay, so now we should be able to dig, you dug a hole in this space, so we still have our axe, we have our shovel, we dug a hole in the space. Cool. 
This is save, so we should be at 3-0 with the hole dug in the space. We stop and run. So we load it. We dug a hole in the space at 3-0. Look at that. Awesome. So now we need a way to add friends. Right, we should have a list of friends we can add. Now the problem is we don't really... Like, we'd have to make a new player, so we could do that. We can add a friend. So we'll say, okay, or add friend. Add friend or quit. Okay, so if you want to add a friend. So if their choice is add friend, add friend, then what do we want to do? Well, we need to ask for their, what's your friend's name? What's your friend's name? And then we'll get a friend name. So string friend name equals keyboard.next line. And then we'll make a new player. So uh, player friend equals a new player given the player name. And then we'll take my player, we'll add friend given the friend. And then we'll tell them we added, I don't know, plus friend name as a friend. Sure. If you want to add a friend, great. Now, how about travel to Friends Island, right? Or visit friend? How about visit friend? Visit friend. Add friend. Visit friend or quit. Okay, these are getting long here again. I'm getting lots of options here. So how do we visit a friend? Well, we need to find out what's the friend's name. So let's go here. If it's visit friend, what's your friend's name? Get the name. So we don't need a new player here. Then we need to go and try and find that friend. We'll say for friend uh, or no, player friend in friends. Is that not right? Friends. I get friends. All right, player that get friends. If the friend dot equals, no, I guess we we're just checking by name, right? So friend dot get name equals the friend name. Then we're going to say my current island is equal to friend dot get home. And then we need to add friend.gethome.add player. We're going to add the player there. And then we're going to take our, oh, before we do that, that's right. So before we do that, our current island, remove player, given the player. So take our player out of our current island. Our current island moves to the friend's home. And then we add our player to the friend's home here. So maybe island needs, um, do we have a way to get the owner? So we need a way to get the owner, right? So, or get owner's name, I guess, maybe? How would get owner's name? So public string get owner's name. Return owner dot get name. Right, so then we can go, um, oh, that's friend name here. Oops, oh, that's not the right way to do that. Yeah, so equals, not equals ignore case, the friend name. There we go. And then we'll tell them travels to, traveled to, Kern Island dot get owner's name Island uh, too many the more pluses here right you're like concatenate getting a little wide there sorry you folks still with me it's gotten awfully quiet in chat we're just kind of having fun iterating on this just uh, building little pieces at a time All right, so we can visit a friend we can add a friend. So if you have two friends with the same name, we're going to have a problem, but sure, that's fine. I'm not, not too concerned about all the edge cases at the moment. 
Hmm. Smooth. I was expecting chunky. So maybe we tell them to on our current island then, right? On current island get space. Uh, I don't know. Currently on the island of or something. Oh here, yeah, here X Y. We will tell them the island name as well. Um, the percent s is island at x y. Add in current island. Dot get owner's name. Oh goodness, that got too long again. Get owner's name. Current x, current y, current space description. Let's we'll see if that works. So Eric's Island, add zero, zero. It's an empty space with a place to build. Let's add friend. Let's add my friend Larry. We added Larry as a friend. Okay, so let's visit friend. Let's visit Larry. Now we're at Larry's Island, add zero, zero. It's space with a shovel. Excuse me. Let's save. Save the game. So quit. So we should be on Larry's Island when we load the game. So we're currently on my island. If I load, I should be on Larry's Island now. Space with, the space with the shovel. So it's loading that island. No, it, um, ooh, we, we probably want an option for go home then too, right? Have an option for go home? Let's add that. So how about a go home option? My goodness, we have a lot of options here. Go home. Go home or quit. All right, so if we go home then, let's see. This is right here. I ought to do it. And these are, are kind of just all over the place here in terms of options. So visit friend. I copy paste it. Oh, goodness. Didn't I copy paste it? Visit friend. Visit friend. Okay. There we go. So this is go home. I want to make sure I didn't blow away that one here. So the current island, we're going to remove the player. Right, take them off. And then we're going to say player.get home. And then my current island, add the player. So remove, add. Oh, look at that. We can just add here. Current island. So remove them from wherever they are. Set the current to their home. Add them back to their home. Right? I think we can do that. And maybe we can even check, right? So if current island is equal to player.get home, or, or if it does not equal get home, right? Then we'll go do that. Otherwise, right, else maybe we tell them you are already home. Right? So if they're not home, go to home. Otherwise, tell them they are home. Let's try that. So we'll start a game. Oops, uh-oh. Uh, too many parentheses there. Too many curly braces. All right. I like it. Let's try that. All right, so let's try go home. You're already home. All right, so let's uh, load the game. We're at Larry's Island. Let's go home. We travel back to Eric's Island. Awesome. All right, what do you think, folks? I know it was like one paragraph, but there's a lot to it here. All right, that's why it was 30 points. The game loop, 10 points. Saving game, 10 points. Loading game, 10 points for that. Right, so like if you didn't have all of the actual game portion, maybe you only got partial points for game loop. Uh, hopefully you had a chance to do your self-assessment there and rate yourself fairly. Uh, I know I'm behind on scoring things because I'm terrible. I'm sorry, it's been it's been a rough summer. Uh, I've, I've told you that before. Um, so assume your self-assessment scores are good. Right, I'm assuming you guys or you folks fairly scored yourselves. So that, that should be a good assumption for the score you're going to get as soon as I can get them entered for you folks. Um, it's been any day now for, for so long, and now the, the pile's just so big, like, you don't want to, like, attack that pile because it's so large. It feels overwhelming. It's just, it's just a bad state to be in, but um, we'll get there. We will get there, friends. I promise. So what do you think? Was this similar to what you folks did? I mean, not too much modifying the classes themselves, but this game loop here was just a bunch of, if you want to do this, do that. If you're going to do this, do that. So we had to add some serializable. Right, so we can move around, and that's, I think, about it. What do you folks think? 
So currently there's no way to tell if there's another player at a given location. I guess we could do that sort of thing too. Uh, when we get the space, we could see if there's another player there. But uh, that's, again, probably a little trickier than we need to do right now. Or we'd have to check the island to see the players that are on it and put them at the spaces and that sort of thing. And now my save data here, then, right, let's open that up. And we'll open up GitHub here. So if I go to my documents, uh, nope, that's the OneDrive documents, the other documents. My goodness. GitHub. CS 2151, we go to project four. There's a save game out that that's only 5k worth of data. That's a decent amount of data, right? Five five thousand kilobytes. Or I'm sorry, five thousand bytes, five kilobytes. Uh, but remember I'm saving every space on every island. So if every island is ten by twelve, I have 120 spaces that I'm storing per friend. So if I add a bunch of friends, right, each friend has their own island. It needs to store each friend in each friend's island along with a duplicate of my current island so I know where I am. It does, there's a little bit of work there, but it's not, I don't think it's too bad. 2151. So here's project four. Uh, let's see, should be in good shape there. We got all of our, our files. And you know what? I set a bad example. My apologies. Give me one second here. Let's go back to Project 3, and I'm going to cite my source, Project 3. So let's put, you know, uh, up at the top here, put uh, started from Project 3. There we go. And I will I'll say add citation. Boom. That's a good habit, right? If it's not yours... Tell me that. Again, I, I wholesale just copy pasted everything. It'd be nice to like one file at a time, but again, I that's what I kind of what I expected. So I'm not not too concerned there. Alright, how are you folks doing so far? So we talked about project four. That is the last of the individual projects. We are done with the individual projects. Right? Um, I'll probably have one quiz for Java FX. I the other quizzes they're they're not very interesting to do because I don't know, just the, the format of it and things. And we're not exactly following the chapter. What we're going to do is we're going to take the ideas from each chapter and show you, I'm going to show you how to do it in Scene Builder because Scene Builder is way better um, than trying to do this stuff by hand. And, you know, not that there's it's wrong to do it programmatically. Uh, there, there's definitely great value in doing things programmatically. But for our level, I think um, using Scene Builder makes a lot of sense for us. Let's set up the scene and then we'll interact with it um, rather than trying to build these things from scratch. We might do a little bit of both. We'll see. And then we'll talk about the final project tonight. So if you haven't loaded Java FX yet in Scene Builder, the links are here in the syllabus uh, right here. Uh, the OpenJFX and Scene Builder, I'll, I'll walk you guys, you folks, through that in just a little bit here. But I think we're due for a break. I've been talking for a while. i got to get some more coffee. Mine's almost empty here. And we can go from there. That sound like a good plan? Throw some music back on. We can take a break. We take 10, so we'll come back, say, 7, uh, 18. We'll come back in a little bit, okay? See you folks in a couple minutes.
Hey everybody, welcome on back. All right. Oh, I owe you a hat change, Mr. Shotstag. Let's see. I got I'll go from Mickey Mouse back to Chess Bra, the original OG chess streamers. Oh, I guess original OG is a little duplicate. Oh man. All right, I did a bad thing. It's like when people say uh, Nick card, your network interface card card. That's no good, right? Are we still on? Hey, hey, Harishi, how you doing? The floppy hat flower. Um, I think my daughter actually came and took it out of my office. I don't see it back where I had it. Yes, I think that's gone. That was the best hat. <laughs> I'm sure I can find one like that again. Don't worry. All right. So couple things. We're going to talk about Java JavaFX um, basics here from chapter 12. Nothing super deep. And we'll talk about the final project. All right. So the first thing we need is the open JFX. So open JFX is the link in the syllabus or it's openjfx.io. Now the important thing here is that we get the same version as the JDK version we're using because they the open JDK goes with the open JFX. Hey, Rishi, yeah, I can check it after class. I've been a little a little busy today. But we're going to take check out my open dev folder. I have JDK 16.0.1. So when I go download the OpenJFX, now you want to skip all this long-term support. You see this is version 11? We don't want any of that nonsense. So scroll on down to latest release here. Here we get the version 16s. And we want the... Windows X64 SDK, or Mac if you're on Mac, or Linux if you're on Linux. So I'm going to download this one here. So I want the same version as my OpenJDK version. So I'm on 16 for OpenJDK, so get version 16 for the OpenJFX. So let me go take a look at my downloads. I'm going to first unblock this one here. But my security, computer security is really obnoxious sometimes. It likes to keep you from doing things. And then I'm going to extract all to that open dev folder. So see open dev. Excuse me. So it's going to extract all of that. So then what you'll see in your C open dev folder is now you have a Java FX SDK 16. Inside of that, there's a couple folders. We care about this lib folder. The legal one's important, but we're not doing anything that matters for that. So inside of lib or library is all these jars. We don't care about the source.zip. We don't need it. We're just going to use all these jar files here. So we're going to grab all nine of those jar files in a minute. So in NetBeans, now we need to set up NetBeans to say, hey, I want to use the OpenJDK. So we're going to go to tools and libraries. And we're going to add a new library for OpenJFX 16. Now, if you don't name it OpenJFX 16, I'm going to have a hard time opening your project. It's not unfixable. It just takes like two extra steps and irritates me. But that's okay. Don't worry too much about it. So if we all call it OpenJFX 16, we're all good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add jars to this OpenJFX library. Oh, yeah, do I already have a JavaFX 16? Oh, I had a 15. There's 16. Okay. Sure. Uh, anyway, we're going to click Add Jars, and we're going to go find that folder. So I'm going to go to my C, Open Dev, Java FX, Lib. I don't want the source zip. I want everything else. So I'm going to click the top, shift click down to the bottom, right? or you can control click, whatever, however you want to do it here. Right? Grab all nine of those and add them in. We'll say OK. So now I have the library loaded. All right, so I'm going to close out Project 4. Now we need to tell NetBeans we want to do JavaFX stuff, but we don't want to use the Oracle version because we just don't like them. So we're going to go to New Project. And instead of Java with Ant, I want JavaFX. Notice it's all grayed out right now. So NetBeans doesn't know that we can do JavaFX. It has to go download some plugins, which is okay. So we're going to say Next. It's going to go say, oh, okay, I need to go get this feature. So let's get our JavaFX implementation. We want to download and activate. Go next. Let's say accept. Sure, that's all fine. We're getting the plugin. Come on, NetBeans. 
Schwanz. Okay, so it installed the plugin. It's going to activate. Now it says, hey, it failed to automatically set up a platform. That's okay, because we added our own library. We're not actually going to use this built-in one here. So all we need to go through is go through those steps, and then we're going to cancel. Then we're going to come back and make a new project, and we're going to skip the JavaFX one. We just need to activate JavaFX. We're going to go back to Java with Ant, Java application. And this is our Hello World JavaFX, or uh, we'll, we'll say GUI. If I name things JavaFX, it gets confused. Oh, there's the rain. I can hear it now. Oh, man. All right. A couple things here. Now, don't worry. We're going to just... We're, we're going to save this project as, like, our example project. And then we're just going to copy-paste things in. Because there's a couple steps we have to do which are kind of obnoxious. So first, we're going to add a library. We want to add our OpenJFX 16 library. We added the library. So now I have all of these OpenJFX jars here, which are just full of other classes, right? All these other cool things in here. Lots of fun things. All the fun things we can do in there. So we added that library. Then we're going to right-click the project and go to Properties. So under Libraries, it's now in our Compile class path. We need to go to this Run tab, and we need to add it to the Module path. So we're going to add Library, add the OpenJFX. So we're adding it to the Run tab here in the Libraries section. Excuse me. And then in Run, we need to give it some VM options. Um, so we need to tell the Java Virtual Machine, hey, please go load these things, because they're going to make a lot of sense to you. So give me just a second here. got to go grab those from last semester, because I'm lazy and like to copy-paste. Uh, GUI Hello World. And like this is literally what I do here. So I, I just will always copy-paste these things. Look at that. I've got some stuff. Uh, let, me, let me just paste it in here. So this is the line. We add the open JFX, J, JFX 16 library. The right click libraries in the project, add open JFX, right click project, go to run, add the Steam options. Make sure to add the project JDK platform and match. And then the libraries run tab. Add that to the module path. So you should probably do that one first, right? Um, Right-click project. So the right-click project, go to run, add this to the VM options. So add this line, the VM options. Add the line below to the VM options. This add modules here. So kind of steps at a time here. So right-click the project, go to Properties, go to Run, VM Options, paste it in. So it's adding modules saying, hey, please load JFX Controls and JFX FXML. You need to add those modules to when we run in our VM Options. That tells, hey, please load these things off the, bat, off the bat. And then Libraries, it's in the Run Module Path. Oh, it didn't hit Save. Oops. Open JFX. Add the library and say OK. All right. So we right-click Libraries, added the Open JFX. It's there, OpenJFX 16. Right-click the project, go to Run, add this line to VM options. Notice this is a comma there. A couple people had trouble with that last time. Um, it's some, it, depending on you know how you're looking, sometimes it looks like a period. Uh, and then Libraries Run tab, add the OpenJFX, OpenJFX 16 to the module path. And then make sure your versions match. So uh, we only have version 16 here for JDK. If you also had version 15, just make sure you're using the right version. So JDK 16, OpenJFX 16. Okay. Then what we need to do is we add in this start method here. And we're not extending anything yet. And we need to launch args. So we need to extends application. Remember, so application is the JFX base class here. So don't pick com sun glass. Pick JFX application application. 
then all this override stuff should be happy. We need to import a couple more things. So we're going to add import for all this should be Java FX stuff. So Java FX, FXML, Java FX scene parent. And one more here, Java FX scene scene, right? So scene parent, scene scene, stage stage, FXML, FXML loader, application. Now, Now what we're gonna go do is we're gonna go add our FXML file. So XML right, is just extensible markup language. We're adding in our little F here because I forget what it stands for actually. What does FXML stand for? Not board. Aha, effects extended markup language. F, X, okay. Sure, why not? So now what we can do is we need to go add an FXML file. So I'm gonna right click my package, and I'm gonna say new. If you don't have empty FXML in the list, that's okay, just go to other. It's gonna be in Java FX, empty FXML. If this is all grayed out, then we just need to go back and tell NetBeans to go activate Java FX again by making a new Java FX project. I know it seems like a lot. Hopefully you already saw this in 1500. If you haven't seen it in 1500, I apologize. It's a bunch of steps, but we just copy paste everything and life is good. So the name of the file here is going to be the name over here. So it doesn't actually matter what we call it, but we can call it anything else. So let's do hello world uh, GUI here. Now we want to use a Java controller. It's going to make a new controller. So this one's important. You want to use Java controller. We don't need a cascading style sheet. We'll talk more about that later this semester. We skipped it in 1500, essentially. Uh, we're going to talk more about using cascading style sheets to make stuff look pretty. We'll say finish. Now you'll notice it added two new files here. It added an fxml and a .java. The fxml file is this one. This is the fxml file. Now we're going to try our hardest not to modify this one by hand because we're going to let Scene Builder do that for us. The .java file is the controller. Oh, sorry. The, I'm sorry. Hello World GUI controller here is the controller class. It implements initializable and it has an initialize method. Right? That's the initialize method from the initializable interface. It's going to be used by the FXML file. And you'll see in the FXML file, there's a controller path here. This is the name of that class. So Hello World GUI controller is Hello World GUI, GUI controller in the Hello World GUI package. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Tools and Options. And we're going to go to uh, Java and Java FX. Right now, we don't have a Scene Builder Home selected. Do we even have it installed? I thought I had it installed. Did I uninstall it? I didn't. I must have uninstalled it. Okay, so we're going to go back and find Scene Builder. Uh, again, there's a link in the syllabus, or if you just Google Scene Builder, it's from Gluon here. It's a free download. I want the Windows installer here. Uh, we don't need any of that. That's fine. I just want the download. Okay, it's downloading. I'm going to run my installer here in a second. Yep, and we'll accept and install. So I'm going to put it in uh, Open Dev because that's where I'm putting all my stuff. It just makes life easy for me. You can put it anywhere, it doesn't matter. You just need to know where it is for when you go give it the path. We'll say finish. And we're gonna go back here, we're gonna go browse and go find our scene builder. So we're gonna go back to open dev, see open dev. We're gonna go into scene builder and say, okay. So now we're saying, hey, here's the scene builder integration. Go launch scene builder from here. Now what's cool is I can double click my FXML file and it's going to go launch the scene builder application, which is a little drag and drop GUI tool for building graphical user interface applications because writing stuff by hand in XML sucks. So what we're going to do, we're going to add um, some options. So now you have containers and controls. These are our two most common ones we're going to look at containers and controls. Again, we'll get to more of them as we go. But for now, what I want is a label. So a label is a basic place to put text. So I'm going to drag, and you can put it anywhere you want on the screen here. Right? It's just drag and drop. Now over on the right, you see all the properties of label. 
So I'm going to take the text away. I don't want any text right now. I want it to be blank. Okay. And then what I want is I want to give it an ID. So an ID is what is this known as in code? So we'll just call this my label, just a label. Okay. You can change all sorts of other cool properties here. So you can do font properties. Let's go change this, give it the best font here. So let's do Comic Sans. And let's do size, I don't know, it's like 64. Let's make it real big here. Cool. Oh, and if it goes away, don't worry, you have this navigation pane over here on the left. I can go find my label again. But anyway, I've got a label. Maybe I'll move it up a little bit more. I don't know. That's, I'm sure it's fine. Then we're going to add a button. Now the button here, we're going to change the text. We're going to say, click me. For the button, again, let's uh, change that to Comic Sans just for fun here. Because I like that. And we'll make that a little bit bigger, maybe. So 18, sure. Now, the button, we don't need to refer to the button in code, so it doesn't need an ID. You can add one if you want. It's not going to hurt anything, but we're not going to refer to it in code. So it's optional. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the code section here. I'm going to expand that. And I want an on action. Oh, I did the wrong one. Sorry. Uh, FX ID is where we need to give the IDs, not the regular ID over here. My, I'm sorry. I got excited. There's too many options here. So make sure you give it an FX ID if you're going to want to refer to it in code. So that's label here. Here we go. Now our button on action, we want to give it when we click the button, that's the action. We want something to happen. So what do we want to call that? Uh, we'll call it, I don't know, button click. Okay, so that's the button click. There's all sorts of other cool actions you can do. We'll worry about more of those later. Right now, I just want the button click. I'm going to hit save. So control S, save or file save, and it'll say, hey, change is saved. So if we now go back to NetBeans, if you double click, it opens Scene Builder. If you right click and edit, it'll show you it generated all of this FXML code for me. Here's my label, right? If FX ID is label, here is its X and Y coordinates. Now, the funny thing is X and Y, the zero, zero is top left because this is programming land, not math land. So forget the math origin being bottom left. We're at top left, zero, zero. So it's how many to the right and how many down for X, Y. And then here's a button at this X, Y. Here's the action here is button click. It's the text. Um, it's got a font property, right? So we change the font. So it generated all that for us. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to right click the FXML file. We're going to say make controller. Make controller is going to come to my controller class here and it's going to add a bunch of stuff. This at FXML means, hey, it was generated by the FXML. So it added a label called label. It added a button click method here for me. So you can do all this stuff by hand, but I'm a big fan of not doing stuff by hand. So we're going to use this cool scene builder tool to set up our graphical user interface applications. What I can do with the button now, so when the button is clicked, I want to take the label and I want to call a method on it. There's a method called set text. Hello world. We'll tell, have it set the text to hello world. Now let's run it. Now the big difference here, oh goodness. Oh, what did I do? I mean launch. Oh goodness. Error occurred. Um, line 28. Oh, um, okay. So here at line 20, so reading these is a little bit obnoxious, but the error there found at line 28. Uh, not a very good error message, actually. But at line 28, I tried to load something named fxml.fxml. I don't have a file named fxml.fxml. Mine is hello world gooey.fxml. And look, I even have a, a comment. Change the name of your fxml file to match. And I didn't pay attention to my own comment. Oops. So it sets the, it gets the FXML file and loads it, sets the scene using that root, sets the title, sets the scene, and shows it. So with FXML, it uses this uh, kind of the, the, the concept of a, of a, a, a play, maybe. Um, so you have a stage. Stages can have different scenes. So you have one stage and you can have multiple scenes on that stage. Uh, you have this scene and then you might have this scene, you might have this scene, you might have this scene, and you can change between scenes on this given stage. So start is given a stage from us being an application and we say, hey, stage, here's your scene. This scene is from this root here that we're going to load from our FXML file. Now let's try run. 
So we set the title to gooey, gooey, gooey. We have a click me. Oh my goodness, it's so large, it doesn't even fit. Hello world, we're going to have to slide that over a little bit. So come back to Scene Builder. We'll grab our label. And let's see if we can't move that. Nope, label. Where's my little handles for it? Oh man, okay, so sometimes they're really obnoxious to move. So I'm just going to give it some text for a second. Now I can drag and drop that over a little bit better. And I can take the text back out. Okay. And we'll make sure you save. It's got to save the changes. And then we'll run it again. Click me, and now Hello World fits. So we've done our first graphical user interface application. Now, what's different about these, before, all of our applications that were console-based were line by line by line by line. The only time they pause is if we were waiting for user input. Right, so it's very procedural. It's very, this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and we're done. With graphical user interface applications, that all goes out the window. Your program does nothing until your user interacts with it. So until I click something or interact with something or do something, until there's an event, the application sits and waits. So GUI applications are event-driven, right? You are responding to events triggered by the user, whether or not it's clicking things or dragging things or moving the cursor places or typing things. You have all sorts of really cool options we can do when we build graphical user interface applications to respond to events from the user. And all of that happens in our controller. Oh, thank you, Professor Burp. You notice I was slouching. Let me get my little backboard here. So by adding methods here that handle events. Now there's an event object here, which is really cool. We'll look more at that next week. There's some cool things we can do with this event object. For right now, we don't really care too much. So we'll say, hey, when you click the button, do this thing. That's it. We're good. We're good to go. All right, so that's our Hello World GUI in a nutshell. Uh, there's a lot of other cool things we can do with graphical user interface applications. Again, I don't know how much you covered in 1500 or not, so I don't want to go over too much of it. Um, if you already saw it, great. You, you should be in pretty good shape for Chapter 12. If you haven't yet, I'm going to link you out to um, a video you can watch at your leisure to talk more about the basics of Chapter 12 that probably should have already been covered. Um, and I apologize if it's not, but I don't want to spend too much time. I know a lot of you folks had me already. Um, so I'll let you folks skip that. Oh, I'm sorry, Professor Burp. Yeah. Um, so hopefully after the storm uh, passes, you'll, you'll, you can get into working on here. But I want to talk about the final project. That sound like a good plan? Let me close all these links here. Well, and I'll push this out in GitHub for you, too. Um, this is... Why is it... Wait, what? Oh, I put that in my 1500 folder. Okay, so let me close this project down. And I have to move it. My bad. So let me go to my documents and GitHub. So if you put something in the wrong folder, you can just drag and drop it out. Hello, world. GUI. I'm just going to cut out from 1500, put it into 2151 and paste it in. All right, now I should see a bunch of stuff here. There we go. Now, there's actually a couple things I don't want in here. So I do want to go and edit this git ignore by hand. That's the problem with copy paste. It's not a big deal because we don't actually have anything private, but it's just, it's, it's a bad habit to leave stuff in there. So I'm gonna open that one. And so remember the git ignore file tells git what not to add. It's things you don't need to add to it here, and it actually gets modified by NetBeans automatically, because NetBeans is really smart. So here's this Hello World GUI. I'm going to cut that out of the 1500 version, put that into the 2151 version, and say, hey, please don't add anything in build, because we can generate it, and please don't add anything in the private folder of the NetBeans project folder. And okay, we'll close those. Save. Yes. Save, close, okay. So now when I come back to NetBeans, some of those should go away. Yep, much better. So here's Hello World GUI. Commit and push. All right. 
Are we good so far? Let me go back to... I don't think I had any edits, so yeah, I'd want to discard. We'll talk about the final project. Now again, I, I do recommend you do this in pairs. Um, it's not required, and you pairs and individuals do the same project. Um, it, it takes a little bit more work to do the coordination of working together in a pair, but I think you're going to get a better product out of it. But given our remote learning nonsense, then I, I'm just not going to require it. So oh, we need a GitHub Classroom link. Oh, Make a link for you folks real quick. Uh, so this one is due the 17th, I believe, at 6 p.m. Right, and we need to add a new grade. So I call this final project. There we go. Then our final project. Um, this will be 40 points then, total. I'll add a little rubric for you in a little bit. Go add a new, grab that link. Project. Uh, I think that's it. Project template. All right, there we go. Got the link set up. Please submit the URL to your feedback pull request and a self-assessment using the rubric. All right, so this uh, this can be done. There's or is recommended. I, I recommend, I suppose. And we work in pairs individually if you want. Individually, oh, if it's anything that gets close enough, individually if you want. All right. Oh. So we're going to build a Yahtzee game. You guys ever played Yahtzee? Yahtzee. Uh, where's my Wikipedia link? There we go. I mean, maybe we should not call it Yahtzee because this is copyright, right? <laughs> um, that's okay. No, so we're going to write a JavaFX application that allows you to play Yahtzee. And we're going to play um, versus another player. So it'll be like, here's player one, here's player two. So having a computer for it is not too terrible. Um, there, there's some easy ways to look at doing that. But again, um, that's not anything we need to tackle right now. But what happens with Yahtzee is you get a set of dice. You get five dice and you get three chances to roll them so in a round you get three rolls of the dice you can save the dice and re-roll other dice so you're going to roll all five dice your first turn and then you can save a couple of them there's actually an online yahtzee i think that you can play that's a free one this is it yahtzee.online i don't know get yahtzee online from the microsoft store Play dice games online. One of these is probably fine. Someone had a decent one. It was... Cardgames.io. Is it this one? Oh, yeah. So this one has Bill. Don't worry about Bill. You got five dice. We're going to roll our dice. And you pick which ones you want to keep. So we'll keep the sixes here. And it's showing you what your potential score is right now. So the upper section scores the sum of those dice. So for how many ones you have, times one. How many twos you have, times two. How many threes you have, times three. How many fours you have, times four. How many fives you have, times five. How many sixes you have, times six. So I have two sixes, so it's worth 12 points. So I could score 12, or I could try rolling again to get more sixes. So I got another six, I'm going to roll again. I didn't get any others, so I'm going to score my sixes here at 18 points. I could also score a three of a kind. A three of a kind scores the sum of the dice. A four of a kind scores the sum of the dice. A 
Full house scores 25. A small straight, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 3, 4, 5, 6 is 30 points. A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is 40 points. A Yahtzee is all five dice being the same. is 50 points. And a chance is just some of the dice. The trick is you're only allowed to score them once. So... Um, similar to... But no computer player. Okay, so we don't need Bill. So I'm going to score my 18. Now Bill's going to have a turn. He rolls and keeps some dice. And it's cute. We watch him roll. We don't need to do a Bill. So we're just going to have player two instead of Bill. All right. And it's our turn. So you only get a score each category one time. So if you can't score it, then you have to keep zero. Right. So I have a two, three, four. I'm going to roll again, see if I can get a, a small straight. Now I have a five, six. So now I have a large straight. So I can keep all five. And I can get my large straight. That's 40 points there. Now it's Bill's turn. That's Yahtzee. We're going to do this as a Java FX application. Uh, I'll put together the rubric for you a little in a little while. Um, so we want to build this out with classes, right, that interact with our Java FX application. Now we don't need to use images if we don't want to for the dice. So I'm going to have some images required, um, but you know, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that as we get there. We're going to talk about images. Um, that's actually the eight three week of eight three. We're going to talk about images. So for now, if you want to start just thinking about it, you can just use numbers. Right? And then later we can say, hey, if it's this number, use this image instead. All right? We'll look at some controls, graphics, and effects, and media. We'll do some fun things there. I'm hoping this will be a lot of fun. Um, you can actually build a game that you can play, something interesting. Uh, there's way easy ways to make it more than two-player. Uh, we'll talk about some of those, but for now, all we need is to have is one versus one. Like, if my family wants to play, we just you, just, you can have X number of people. It doesn't matter. You just all take turns. And our graphical user interface application, that's a little bit harder to do because we need space for all of them defined. But that's okay. Right, we'll, we'll figure that out when we get there. We'll just play Yahtzee. So that's a goal. small straight. I already got it all, already. I got my small straight. So the goal is you want to fill up your spaces. You don't want to get zeros if you can help it, right? So here's some fives. Let's roll. Another five. Okay, so I got four fives. That's, I could score four of a kind or I could score fives. Uh, there's also a bonus. If you get um, 63 or more, then you get an extra 35 points. Right? So the, the bonus is good. Um, the Yahtzee bonus, don't worry about that. If you score a Yahtzee a second time, you can get extra 100 points. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that rule. Uh, it just adds extra things. Don't worry about it. Uh, and don't worry about the Joker rules or anything like that. Okay? So that's the final project. Questions, thoughts, concerns? Uh, again, I'll link you to the um, intro to Java FX, the Chapter 12 stuff. Uh, you can watch that from last time if you hadn't seen it from 1500 if you've seen it already you should be fine all right um, I need oh, submit the that URL for grading so. okay and we're gonna meet together in a month to show off our games and each partner or each pair can show off their game or each individual can show off their game. We'll do a quick round playing it. You can say, hey, I did a bunch of things. We're good to go. Um, we're going to add in a save game feature. Right? So we can save mid-game so you don't have to finish it. You've seen that's relatively easy with the serialized to save and load games. We'll add some features around that uh, for saving and loading. should be a lot of fun. All right, so I'll, I'll get the rubric updated in a little bit. I know uh, the storm is coming in. Oh, it looks like it's actually passing through a little bit, but my, my power has been trouble lately. And we're hitting that two-hour mark where you folks are probably pretty tired of listening to me already. Oh, you got hail? Oh, man. It was cold enough for hail? I guess it's colder up in the atmosphere, higher up in the atmosphere, I guess, so you can get hail anytime. I don't know. I don't know much about weather. That sounds freaky. All right. That's all I got for today, then. Uh, yeah, we can exit... Cool. All right, folks. It's been fun. Let me know how I can help. Uh, we'll chat. I've got office hours tomorrow. Um,
3 to 4.30 and 10 to 11. Don't forget study group on Thursdays. Um, you are more than welcome to discuss this with other groups, but remember, don't go to the point where you're taking notes about code. Like, hey, this is what it might look like. This is how I lay things out. These are some methods I might have. That's all fine. Discussion's great, right? But don't don't get to the point where you're taking notes about their code, and we'll, we'll be okay. All right, so let's see who else is around on Twitch that we can send a raid off to. Um, let me put up my ending screen here. That, that seems to do better than when I pull up Twitch for my ending screen. Um... You want to see wood crafting or um, voids making? Ooh, ambrosia maple using a wool gouge. That looks fun. Uh, volcano dock. It's talking about volcanoes. We got rocketology talking about Kerbal Space Program. We got Neuro playing StarCraft II. Paleontologizing talking more about dinosaurs, but you couldn't guess. Where should we go hang out? Ooh, Visual Studio streaming. You can look at ASP.NET Core. That's fantastic stuff. You got so many good choices, friends. I'm going to take a look at some woodwork here with Boyd. All right, folks, you take care. I will see you around. Let me know how I can help. Um, I'm here to make sure things are up and working and running and you're making progress. So let me know how I can help. Take care.